yeah. Can, can I see that again? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> can I try that? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And today we're with our pair of 1985 Honda Elite Deluxe. 150s. We picked up these two scooters at a Scambia motorcycle in Bruton, Alabama. That is the the motorcycle salvage yard. Our our task today. Oh, more. Okay, good. We're moving. Oh, it's got a key. Well, first and foremost, again, like I said before, 1985 Honda Elite Deluxe 150. Now there were two models. There were the Honda Elite 150 and the Honda Elite Deluxe 150. How to ride a Honda scooter. First, select shirt pant combo. We suggest this or this. Next, select appropriate shoes. We suggest two. Then choose a scooter that best expresses your individuality. There are many sizes and colors. And always wear your helmet. Honda scooters. They're everything but ordinary. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but I want to take a moment just to say thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And if you're enjoying this, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, share it with all your friends. Thanks again, guys. Let's get back to the video. The Deluxe came with a retractable front headlight, which this, the Honda Elite Deluxe, was the first motorcycle with a retractable headlight, which is why I'm super excited. The other thing about the Deluxe compared to the, the regular Elite, you got these shields, a little bit more protection there. You also got the upgraded dash, which is all digital. So you got that. The other one was just analog. Guys, I still haven't figured out why I'm into these things. You know, your heart wants what your heart wants, right? I can't do anything about that. I, for some reason, I'm into them. This, uh, so we've got both the red and the blue. The good thing about this one, and I went ahead and already pulled the batteries out. I started pressure washing them the other day, but then it started raining. The good thing about this one is the engine moves. This guy's been in a scrapyard for a long time. And the other thing about, and I'll share this, there, uh, it's got a fuel pump, so the carburetor, everything is all still intact. So we just need to put the rear end, I mean the uh, clutch, whatever that, thing on the back goes that guy whatever that's called uh the transmission not the transmission but you know what i'm talking about the thing that goes right there we just need to take the one from there to put it right here but the great thing is i even popped this fuel tank and this gas cap off the other day and it's not awful in here there is still fuel in there and it doesn't smell guys you know what old fuel smells like this doesn't smell like that i think it's because the system is sealed and it had a vacuum, so it smells, don't get me wrong, it smells like old gas, but it doesn't smell like, you know, that furry gas that you end up, you know, I've opened some of these gas tanks before and the gas is growing out of it. So this is not the case. Speaking of growing out of it, we do have, we will need a lumberjack, lumberjack to continue to work on this thing. There is a branch growing out it grows up from the bottom, so we'll have to figure out how to how to get it out to uh, make it work. It looks like this tail light may have melted right there in the middle, but no worries. We got another one right there. Guys, our plan is to make take two to make one out of these two. And yeah, so I'm gonna continue my pressure washing. This one does have a key, that one does not. This one looks to be, uh, looks like it was maybe smashed at one point, right up in here. So no problem because that side was not. 
It's the beauty of having two of them, right? You can go ahead and put it together. It will be a little bit of a mismatch, but that's no problem. Considering it was laying on its side, this one was laying on its side in, in the, the trees for years, but everything is there. The good thing is on the, I did, like I said before, I did pressure wash it. And so these are moving. So I started to, I'm gonna continue again, just to get the rest of the stuff off. Again, this one, engine not as complete, but it has this part, which is the part we need, whatever that's called, put in the comments down below. But it is missing the top end of, this, of the engine. Uh, and that cam chain's not gonna work. So this engine is not gonna be any good in that, but there's still a carb hanging there. There's still stuff on this that we can use. What I think is I think this frame over here may be better than that frame. So we may end up with taking that engine, putting it over here. Again, two to make one, stay with me. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this seat off real quick, just because we need to clean everything out from underneath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop it off. Get this guy up. Okay, we'll get this guy off. So guys, for some of you, for some of you guys who are thinking that I'm crazy for dragging some stuff out of a junkyard, out of a salvage yard, because it, it can't, it's all garbage, right? I've got a jump box hooked up right here. Got the key in the ignition. Just listen to this baby run. No, it's not gonna start, but what we do get. We get that and we get that. This thing has been abandoned for years and And it closes. Now, full disclosure, when I did it the first time, it didn't close. But all I had to do was turn the thing, now it works. But look, guys, I've got to see, the gauges are really dim. I got to see if there's a way to get that uh, back. The little LED gauges, you can see them, but they're really, really dim. It's got a clock, but I think the clock may need to uh, be adjusted or the LED is not working. We're, again, we have another one over here. We have another one over here. It's kind of delaminated in some places, but we're hoping that between these components that we'll be able to find a way to make that work. But it does work, it's just dim. You can see it, it does work. So maybe it'll maybe it'll come back to life. I don't know. You guys, if you know anything, anything about this Casio calculator technology, let me know. Oh, let me show you this. Even though it's hanging around, it's still wanting to work. Tail light works. Guys, this thing's gonna run. Guys, I know I said just a few moments ago that I don't know why I like these things, but you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. But watching that headlight flip up and down, I'm smitten. I'm, I'm head over heels for these guys as everything about them. I can't wait. So let's get into pressure washing these, cleaning them up. It's really just to get all the dirt and grime up out of, out of here. So I'm gonna try to get all of that out on both of them. I will pull the hoods up so I can get underneath those. And I'll show you that real quick. That's kind of a neat, neat thing. I've already loosened them up, little TV magic. Um, I should have got the screwdriver and make it a little easier, but it's just these two screws that hold it up. Just screwing around. Okay, now let me show you. Just a little bit more. Look, it's got a radiator. This thing, the, uh, <laughs> everything. So I wanna get all of this stuff out of here because I gotta be able to get to the, the radiator and the fan eventually to make sure all of that works. But I want, it, if I can get all the grime out of it, it'll make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna pull the, I'm gonna pull the other 
uh, hold downs over there. So while I'm pressure washing, I can just get that out of the way. So let me get to that. Let's see if I can get this side cover off. Let's see if I can figure out how this side cover comes off. Without breaking it. That's the key. Is that it? I just got one tab right here. How does it clamp? Okay. All right. Oh, good. Just like that. That's how it comes off. Good deal. Okay. Here is the, the tree still growing in. It is in there pretty good. Gotta figure out, it looks like it wraps around. I mean, we're gonna have to extract it, but it's gonna be tough. Apologize for the, uh, it's our neighbor's dog. It's so awesome. She's such a great dog. She just has separation anxiety and she's massive. She seriously comes up to, to my waist and that's kind of her body. Part Great Dane, part other huge dog, but she's good. Sometimes when she hears me outside and she's outside that she gets a little lonely. But don't we all? Let me clean this up. Okay, let's see if we can get this spark plug the cap boot off. See if we can get this thing off without snapping it. Squirt some penetrating oil on there. We'll get it off because we're the engine turns over. I want to be able to put some juice in the, in that top end and see if I can spin this thing over a little bit more. Let's see what it looks like. At least we got instructions on how to route the vacuum hoses because we'll need that D7EA, okay. There's a little wrench, but it's got a spark plug out. Let's see if we can put some juice in here. And let's see if this sucker turns over. Yeah! <laughs> it actually turns over. I was curious to see if it was just the if it was just spinning on the flywheel or something on the shaft, if it was just stripped, but it's not because it shoots stuff out. That means it's got some kind of compression. I don't know if it's got enough, but we'll find out. Let's see if we can, the starter button doesn't work, but let's see if this, if it jumps over if the starter works. No, you got nothing on the starter. Hmm. It may just need maybe a bad connection. It may be the starter could be seized. So we may need a starter for this thing, but we may have one over there and that one may be good. So who knows? We'll check. We may have to pull this starter off, see if we can maybe just beat on it a little bit, see if it actually does something. Okay, let's see if we can get this exhaust off so I can get the rest of this tree off. Okay, I think I have this thing just about free. Yeah, gotta get it free of the tree. Oh. Like this sucker, yes. This is tree. It was wrapped around the pipe down here, so I gotta now I gotta get this guy off. Let's see if we can extract this. Try not to, oh. oh, let's see where it is. Let's go this way. Oh. Let's get the hammer out. Let's try a little bit more. 
Let me smack it with a hammer again. I got one on the other side. Yeah, let's smack it again. Got most of it out. That's pretty good. Now we can, now we can clean off the back of this. Let me put a drill on this and see if it actually turns over and if it has compression. It does have compression. Sounds good. This thing's gonna run. Guys, this engine rolls over really good. It's got compression. Let's see if I can figure out this starter thing. Boy, if we can get this sucker to make noise, I might poop my pants. Guys, this is exciting. Stay with me. Okay, so we're checking grounds. I took the cover off so I could get to here. I'll show you what I'm getting. I'm getting, so I'm here. And then, but I'm not getting it. I get it to the, the case here, but I'm not getting it to the starters. Okay, so we're gonna spray this. I still don't know what it's called. It's got a lot of rust in it. So we're gonna spray it with this rust dissolver. I bought this the other day at Home Depot. And I was shocked at how well it works. So we're just going to hose it down, let it sit, get inside. It's a really thick kind of gel. So it just sits on it and eats it away. Let's see if we can get some of this stuff off. And then we'll let this sit on for a little while. Well, probably till tomorrow. Okay, so let me show you. This is the other rusty tank that I, for the, the, uh, the scooter. And all I did was last night, sprayed some right here where it's black. You see where it's black? I sprayed it, let it sit there, and then didn't do anything. Actually, that was two nights ago. And then rinsed it off so we could see that. Then last night I was telling Carrie about it, and all I did was squirt some right here. I didn't even rinse it off yet, but I just wanted to see if it'd work. Look, we're down to bare metal again. It's pretty crazy. Rust-Oleum rust dissolver. I've never, this is the first time I've used it. Rinse this off, just see what it looks like. Okay, so you should be able to see the, the pretty distinct line, and it went right here. And then all of this is just what ran down. Ran down, and it cleaned up pretty good. It's wet, because I just pressure washed it, but this is all still rusty. This is all still rusty. This too. But look. He cleaned it up. There's no rust there. And pretty crazy. I kind of like this stuff. So I like it because it's, it's sticky. And it goes where you put it. We're going to do a more in-depth kind of review of this. But I think it works pretty good. We've got it cooking over here for right now. We'll see what it looks like. We'll let it sit for about a half hour. That's what it says on the, the container. We'll let it sit for a half hour and then we'll rinse it off, see if it looks any better. But I have a feeling I may just leave it on longer. But we'll see. It's definitely doing something. Okay, so we're gonna pull, go ahead and pull this engine out. Okay, so I've got the bolts out of that hold the shock so the shocks are free the back end is free now I'm just on this side making sure whatever's connected to the frame is not connected to the engine here so like this vacuum line I just got off this vacuum line I just got off it was connected so I think we're good on this side we may have a few I think we have a couple of wires so I think if I pull off this 10 millimeter here and then the one on the solenoid I'll free up the wires that go down to the starter in the back half here, so I should be pretty good. Okay, guys, we got the engine out. It uh, took some wrestling to do, but we were able to get it out. It's, it's not difficult to remove, except um, the hoses are really hard, so those to remove, everything was just a little finicky. 
and everything has been in one place for a long time so they didn't want to let loose so we we're able to to get it free we have it over here on the stand just on the cart so we can start going through it um, clean it up we'll scope it in the the next video we have the carburetors to clean we've got voltage regulators to check and start checking components clean it up really good so we can put it back in and the engine does turn over it, it we, we showed that already it turns over it, it feels like it has some compression this engine on the other hand this bolt right here is free it spins it just does not want to come out i walloped it with a, a, a sledgehammer a ball peen hammer i beat it with everything and it just it's the only thing holding this in so we'll end up getting it out eventually we may just have to remove those the old-fashioned way i think we're pretty good we're uh, a little over a week removed from picking these two guys up from the salvage yard and we have power through this one to the headlight that works and then now we have the engine out we do have compression on this one we do have to get this the back end of the I don't know what that's called you guys let me know in the, i don't know anything about scooters let me know what that thing's called down there like i said we'll go through make sure everything's good on this and then we'll start putting it back together we'll clean the carburetors make sure they're good we've got two voltage regulators we'll go through all of the the other components that we have here we've got other components i'm not sure what they are i'll have to look them up see what they are one of these is a cdi box one of them is something else but like i said we have two okay guys i'm pretty excited about our progress thus far on this and i really look forward to the next step of this which will be getting this engine going uh cleaning up all of this finish de-rusting it take everything apart put it back on and uh, make a running riding scooter that we drug out of the salvage yard Guys, I want to thank you for watching yet another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And do me a favor, like, tag, share, and follow us on Instagram at Motorcycle Rewind. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're in the subscribing mood, just wander on over to our friends, Brick House Builds, Gold Guy, Moto Mango, Ace Cafe Bikes, Miles Zero Racers, Plan B Motos, Pete's Classic Cycle, and Lady Moto Bang. And give those guys a subscribe too. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day.